The Detroit Pistons season is officially over, but that's not the big news here. After the Pistons lost to the Chicago Bulls, Dwayne Casey said in his post-game conference this was his last game as the Pistons head coach. Why is he no longer the Detroit Pistons coach, and who will be replacing him? We're going to talk about that in today's episode of the Locked On Pistons podcast. You are Locked On Pistons, your daily Detroit Pistons podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's the deal? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On Pistons podcast. Per usual, I'm your host, Kuka Hill. You can find me over on Twitter, at Kuka Hill. I want to thank you guys for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. And if you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel, at Locked On Pistons. Hit that subscribe button. We're under 100 subscribers away from 5K. We're in a race with the rest of the Locked On Network to climb up the rankings i'm just i think i'm like 100 subscribers behind locked on blazers i'm trying to catch up with them so if any of you guys who are watching these videos are not subscribed hit that subscribe button i really would appreciate it or you can leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on that's another great way to support the podcast and today's episode is brought to you by price picks first time users can receive 100 percent instant deposit match up to 100 dollars with promo code locked on that's pricepicks.com use promo code locked on so the Detroit Pistons season has officially wrapped up. It's over. They lost their final game to the Chicago Bulls. They finished the season with 17 wins. That's not even the big news here. We're not recapping the season. We're not discussing how the season ended. All that stuff doesn't matter because Dwayne Casey, and what I will say is actually a pretty a pretty cool move, um, actually broke his own, I, not firing, but, but moving on from the head coaching position himself. Now we had heard, I mean, just last episode, we talked with Corey Woods of M Live about how it was sounding more and more likely like Dwayne Casey was not going to be the head coach next year. He started to talk like somebody as of over the past week, like someone who was no longer going to be here next year. But nothing was confirmed, and it wasn't like Woj broke this. It wasn't like Shams broke this. No, Dwayne Casey came after the game and said, this was my last game coaching for the Detroit Pistons. This is his last game as a head coach, which I think is pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool that he did that. Um, not everybody, actually, I, I can't think of anyone else who's who's able to break that themselves. Usually someone jumps them and they don't get to tell their own their their own story their own way. Um, but I, that's the big news here. Dwayne Casey is no longer the Detroit Pistons head coach. They are going to be looking for a new head coach. And later on, we'll talk about some candidates that could replace them. Um, but I want to talk about why. Why is Dwayne Casey lo- no longer this team's head coach? And before I, before I say that, I want to read some quotes here. From Dwayne Casey Um, after the game. He said, Tom, referring to owner Tom Gores, Tom has given me an opportunity to move into the front office. I'm excited to go to the next phase of my life. Time to spend time with my family. This team is on the right track. They probably need to hear a new voice. This is my decision. I made the decision that I think is best for myself and the organization just to have a new voice. Hopefully my legacy here in Detroit will be with the growth of these young guys and not the wins and losses. I'm not trying to run away from that. Um, he went on to talk about how he, how it went when he very first signed here, how Tom Gores had to recruit him here, and how he developed a really good relationship with both Tom Gores and Troy Weaver. Um, and again, mentioned that he would be moving up into the front office. Um, so why was Dwayne Casey move? Why, why did Dwayne, Dwayne Casey move on from this position? And technically, I, I me personally, he may feel like this is his decision. He he may obviously he may have had an input in this, but I think. Troy Weaver had decided a while ago that this was the summer that he was going to go get his own coach. And if you guys remember, going all the way back to Cade's rookie season, I had been telling you guys that this was likely going to happen. I had been mentioning that this season, after this season, it was likely that Dwayne Casey would move on to the front office. I said that it was very unlikely that he would get fired. I didn't see a future where he would ever get fired. I said it was incredibly likely that he would eventually move up into the front office after this season. And now a year and a half, was a year and a half later, two years later, it's happened. So why is why did it happen? Well, Dwayne, number one, is not Troy Weaver's guy. Now, they may have created a really good relationship. Obviously so, because he's moving up into the front office. But Troy Weaver took over this team. He tore it completely down. There's not a single person on this roster that is from, from the roster he took over. I believe he got rid of all of them after one year. He completely tore this thing down. The only constant, though, the only thing he kept around, Dwayne Casey. And when you get a new GM 
and you get a guy who's trying to break everything down to build it back up, they want their own guy. Now, he was cool with having Casey around for the rebuilding time to, to help these guys grow into young men, to help keep the, the, the organization stable while they lost a lot of games. But it was only a, a, it was only a matter of time before Troy Weaver said, I'm going to get my own guy. It's time for me to go get my head coach. And this offseason is the perfect time to do so, which leads me to reason number two. This is the perfect offseason to do it. If you weren't going to do it this offseason, I don't know when you would. This offseason, there are expectations for the Detroit Pistons from the fan base. They no longer, no longer does the fan base uh, want or is going to accept another 60 loss season, like a 50 loss season. Like they're not, they don't want that no more. It's dead. They want to see a jump next season. They want to see some improvement next season. The Pistons got another top pick. They have a lot of cap space. They'll have flexibility to do things that they want, and they're expected to take the next jump. So in that same offseason, if you're expecting to do all that, in that offseason, go get the guy that you want that you think will help you take that next jump. It all works in the exact same. It, it, it kind of works all together. You can get a new pick. You can get some new guys with the roster. And then at the same time, as you reshake the roster, you get a new coach to put in a new offense and new defense and grow with these guys to help them take the next step. It felt like the perfect time. And for the final reason, I want to say this again. Dwayne Casey is a great human being. He is a great man, a very genuine man. He's interacted with my family on numerous occasions. Him and my brothers always come into contact with each other because my dad and, and my family, they run a bunch of gas stations up in, I forget what city it is, but where all the players and, and, and coaches live at, whatever. They'd be seeing Dan Campbell. Um, I, they've seen a few NBA, uh, Piston players, all this stuff, whatever. Um, but Dwayne Casey always goes in there. They say something about me. He never says anything bad. He's always very nice. He's a very genuine person. He's a great person. However, his offense was con was a bit concerning for me. I feel like that was a very clear thing watching this team is that they needed some creativity on the offensive end, especially if they're going to try to make this too big work, which I don't know if they are, but especially if they are, even if they don't, but especially if they are, they need some creativity with their offense. The Pistons continually ran a ton of ISOs. They were in the top half of the league in ISOs the past two seasons, despite being one of the worst teams in the league in isolations. They need some more creativity with their offense. I feel like they need some a young influx at the head coaching position to, to kind of relate with these guys more. And, and that, is, that is, I don't want to say more hip, but that is, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Just... Just with the the new generation, I guess. I, I don't know the exact word I'm looking for. But I think they just need a younger guy, a head coach, a more creative offense, and just a different voice at this point. Next season, there's going to be a lot of guys that may not be on this roster here next year. It's going to be a lot of new guys. They're going to be building a different team, a team that hopefully can win some games. So they need a new voice. So all those reasons combined, along with the fact that Dwayne Casey, while it isn't all his fault, He's been coach. He's been the coach of some of the worst seasons in the Pistons history over the last few years. Now, again, that's not on him, but it, it's not all on him. But man, it's just impossible for you to have that on your record and then expect to like, like no one comes back from that. Like, no matter what the reasoning is, no matter if it, if it was on purpose, like no matter what, it's just you can't coach. You're not going to be the head coach of the second worst season in franchise history and come back. It's like it's just it just doesn't happen. It, and it it's a good thing that happened. Like. Like, it was agreed upon. It's all it's all mutual. Everyone has a good relationship. He's moving up. So it's not like he's being fired or anything. But I, I just saw it very unlikely as well. All the other stuff we've already talked about. After the season that just happened, I, I there was no way you could have brought him back as the head coach. But all those reasons are why I believe that Dwayne Casey is no longer the Detroit Pistons head coach. And why, and why Troy Weaver, for the first time, will be going out there for a head coaching search and getting his own guy. What do you guys feel about Dwayne Casey no longer being the head coach of the Detroit Pistons? Let me know in the comment section down below or over on Twitter at Kuka Hill. Coming up, we'll talk about who is going to replace Dwayne Casey. Who are some names that you guys should look out for? I'm going to tell you guys some names when we come back. But first, I've got to tell you guys about one of our sponsors. This one, got to tell you guys a little bit about price picks. So let's go ahead and assume that the Pistons season was still going on. And let's say today you want to take the over on 
Jane Ivey's points. You want to take the over on Killian Hayes' assist. And then you also, let's say, that Lions were playing still. And you want to take the over on DeAndre Swift's rushing yards and the over on Goff's passing yards. Well, you can do that and put in the exact same entry with price picks, and it's why it's my favorite daily fantasy option out there. You pick two to six players to see if they score more or less on their price picks projection, and you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. No competing against other people, it's just you versus the projections available. Price picks offers projections on any sport that you watch, and trust me, it's literally any sport. NBA, NFL, MLB, women's college basketball, women's professional basketball, uh, uh, eSports, NASCAR, tennis, MMA, boxing, disc golf, your old basketball, cricket, men's college basketball, college football, PGA, and more. eSports, like you have everything. I probably didn't even name all of it in there. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's just that easy. Safe and fast withdrawals currently operational over 30 states and Canada. Download the PricePix app or go to pricepix.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports today. First-time users can receive 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, PricePix will give you $100. If you deposit $50, PricePix will give you $50. Don't forget to enter promo code locked on and sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100 with PricePix. So I want to thank you guys again for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Just over 50% of you guys who watch the videos are not subscribed to the channel. And we're on our way to 5,000 subscribers, just under 100 away. So please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Or leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. That's another great way to support the podcast. So now that we know that Dwayne Casey will not be the head coach, of the Detroit Pistons next season. Who will be replacing him? Who's going to be the Pistons head coach next year? And hopefully for the foreseeable future. Who's going to be Who's going to be it? Nobody knows right now. And if you want me to be, I've already had a few people reach out and ask me. I've, had, I've already had a few people reach out and ask me, Koo, when do you think this is going to be, you know, we're going to find the answer to this. Will it be before the end of the playoffs? Will it be before the lottery? Will it be after the lottery? Will they take all off season? When are they going to try to get this hiring to happen? And that's something I don't know. I don't have any inside information. That's not. That's something I legit. I have no clue on. You guys know if I know something, I'll leave some breadcrumbs along the way. You guys can go back and listen to past podcasts. You guys may see some breadcrumbs I laid along the way. This is one of those things I have no idea. I don't think anyone truly knows. I don't even think Troy Weaver knows right now how long this coaching search will take because they want to take their time. I feel like and get the right guy. And Woj has already tweeted it out, and Shams has also tweeted it out already, that the Pistons are going to have a large cast of people that they will be going through. They've had some names leak out already. Obviously, Emei Udoka. They had um, Chris Quinn get mentioned. They've had uh, what, what's it, Ke- Kevin Ali mentioned. There's a lot of guys that have been mentioned, but as, as it's already been said, they will be talking to a ton of guys to make sure, and I believe Shams also specified that they'll be looking at assistant coaches across the league to interview and a few heck are assistant coaches that actually Weaver is familiar with. They worked with in OKC as well. So according to that, that makes me think that they're going to be taking their time. They're going to want to make sure they do their due diligence. They're going to want to make sure that they get as much information on as many different coaches as they possibly can before they make the decision uh, on who they want, on who they want to be their new head coach. But despite that, who who are some names I think should be at the top of the list? Well, I think I think for obvious reasons, Ime Udoka should be at the top, not at the top, but he will be a name that fans continue to mention. I've already seen Pistons fans go crazy and say, "Get Udoka, get Udoka, get Udoka." He's the guy. Obviously, he's there. He's he's the obvious answer there. You have to get him if you fumble the bag. Like you can't blah blah all this stuff. I know he's going to be the hot hire. He's going to be the hot name that everyone wants. I don't know if he's going to be the head coach of this team. I don't know if he's the best posi- best fit for this position. But he 100% will have his name a part of this. And he will be involved. And you will hear his name rumored to be a part of this search for a while. Until the Pistons make their decision. There are there are two names. There are two names I'm going to tell you guys to stay tuned on. Just to watch out for. I think it could get interesting. Two guys. First guy. Chris Quinn. Chris Quinn. Someone, I'm a fan of Chris Quinn. I think the Pistons are too. I mean, obviously, I believe it was I believe it was Shams. One of the big reporters, it might have been someone different, but they said that Chris Quinn, who is an assistant coach, he's a former basketball player. If you guys played NBA 2K, 
throughout like 2000, the late 2000s, early 2010s. That's probably how you'll know him. That's how I I knew who he was. That he was a former basketball player. But he's a he's an assistant coach for the Miami Heat. He I believe he's the top assistant on Eric Spoelstra's coaching staff. He fills in for him when Spoelstra gets ejected when he gets when he's been sick and he's filled in for a game. Chris Quinn has been on there for a long time. And he's been learning under one of, if not the best, head coach in the entire NBA in Eric Spolstra. He's been there for a while. He's learned a ton of stuff under Spolstra. And I would love, absolutely love, to have a Spolstra, uh, a guy from his tree, coaching the Pistons. I think he would be a great option. The Pistons are interested in him. That's a guy I'd watch out for. I think he has a legitimate chance to be the Pistons head coach in the future. But... Like I said, they're going to be looking at a bunch of guys. It wasn't just his name that they've mentioned. They've mentioned a ton of guys' names. But I think Chris Quinn is a guy you guys should be watching for. Just to give you guys another reason why I'd like Chris Quinn, again, assistant head coach assistant head coach of the Miami Heat. Udonis Haslam, obviously everyone knows he's the harder soul of the Miami Heat. Uh, he's been that for like the last 20 years. And I think, actually, I think he played his last game of his career today. Um, but either way, he said, quote, when you listen to Quinny, Chris Quinn you're hearing Spo it's the same message he has the knowledge the experience the relationship with the players he has every base covered when you talk about checking the boxes to have the ability to be an extremely successful head coach that's that's some nice compliments to be getting from the team captain and the heart and soul of such a great franchise of the Miami Heat Chris Quinn that's a guy that I'd be watching out for if our Pistons fans get to know him go look it up I think he's a very hot candidate for the Pistons. I would not be shocked at all. I would not be shocked at all if Chris Quinn ended up as the Detroit Pistons head coach. Another name that I'll be watching for, which I think is pretty interesting, Bucks assistant Charles Lee. I've seen a lot of guys talk very highly on him. I'm not as familiar with him, but some, a lot of people that I trust, I've seen them talk very glowingly about him. And he fits the he fits the archetype for me. I think the Pistons, and, and this is something I should have mentioned a little earlier. I, I kind of touched on it um, when we were talking about why Dwayne Casey's no longer here. I think this team needs a young head coach. I, I think they need a young head coach that can relate with them and is more. I can't. I don't want the word I keep coming back to is more hit, but I, I don't feel comfortable saying that. It's just you guys know how Nate McMillan said midway through the season with the Atlanta Hawks, he feels like this generation is kind of like passed him up, and he's not. He can't coach in this. This generation, or, or I don't know if he said he can't coach, but he said this generation kind of passed him up and that the times kind of passed him up as a coach. I feel like that's kind of the case with Dwayne Casey. And I think the Pistons need to go younger and have someone who's familiar with this generation and knows how to relate with these players and get them to the next step. That's what I want. And Charles Lee is another guy that fits that. He's 38 years old. Um, he's a former player himself. Um, so... I'd watch out for Charles Lee. I think he's another guy that they've mentioned that the Pistons will be interested in. I think he's a hot uh, a hot name that could possibly be hired as the Pistons head coach. And like I said, there's a ton of coaches that you'll hear the Pistons uh, name attached to. Uh, Kevin Ollie, the former coach over at UConn. I know he coaches right now at Overtime Elite. He's been mentioned. Um, I know James Edwards just came out with an article. He had six names himself that he thought maybe could get interviewed or whatever. Uh, Jay Wright was one of them. I don't necessarily think that's realistic, but I mean, he just threw out six names. So there's going to be a ton of names that you guys will be seeing as possible options for the Detroit Pistons head coach, but mark it down right now. Doesn't mean I'm going to be right, but I'm telling you guys right now, mark it down. April 9th, I'm recording this at 930. Two names I think you guys should be paying attention to. Number one is Chris Quinn and number two is Charles Lee. That's what I'm telling you guys to look out for. Um, let me know in the comment section down below. It's actually the question of the day. Those of you guys who watch on YouTube, you guys can see at the bottom of the screen on the ticker, we have a daily question for each episode. I'll tell you guys each day, obviously, who listen on the podcast version. Um, today's episode's question is, who will be the Pistons head coach next season? Who do, you th- got, who do you guys think they're going to hire? Let me know in the comment section down below or over on Twitter at Kuka Hill. Coming up, Dwayne Casey will be going up into the front office. Should he be getting a front office position? We'll talk about that when we come back. But first, I've got to tell you guys about one of our sponsors, Ultimate Pro Basketball GM. Ultimate Pro Basketball GM is the coolest game I've played in a long time, especially one of the coolest games I've played on my phone. I've always thought I could be a great NBA GM. As it turns out, it's, it's really not out that easy. I'm telling you guys, it's pretty tough. 
If you've had that same thought and have fantasized about managing your own basketball franchise, go and download Ultimate Pro Basketball GM right now. The game allows you to manage every strategic aspect of a franchise, playing through seasons and leading your franchise and fans to glory as you build a historic dynasty. In the simulation you're responsible for, dealing with challenging personalities, both players and coaches, hiring the right coaches and assistants, trading and training players, making draft picks, navigating your franchise through free agency, the draft, all the ups and downs of having multiple of, of going through multiple seasons. All this in a challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Pro Basketball GM is completely free and playable offline and play on the go as you want, when you want to. And I've played it for a few seasons. I, I'm not going to lie. I somewhat gave up. It started getting hot, hard for me. I'm going to get back into it. I wasn't having I wasn't having very successful seasons. It's incredibly fun. I, I just wasn't a very good GM. Locked on Bulls somehow has won multiple championships. Go over there, the, their YouTube section, and ask them, like, what, what's going on? What are you cheating with? I, we got to figure it out. But... Locked on Pistons listeners get 100% free boost to their franchise when using our promo code locked on in the game store. So make sure to check it out. To download the game, just visit probasketballgm.com, scan the code, or look it up in the app stores. That's probasketballgm.com, Ultimate Pro Basketball GM. Start your dynasty today. So I want to thank you guys again for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Locked On Pistons. We're just under 100 subscribers away from 5K. Please hit that subscribe button or leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. That's another great way to support the podcast. Real quickly, I want to say happy Easter to all of you guys who celebrate Easter. Um, I hope you guys have had a great day with family um, and enjoyed you guys' time. When you guys be listening to this, Easter probably would have been yesterday, but I'm recording this the night of Easter. I just got home from spending time with my family. So I hope you guys all enjoyed Easter Sunday. Um, enjoyed some basketball you got to watch early in the morning. I don't know what happened with the NBA on Easter, man. Easter is supposed to be a good day. It's supposed to be, you know, a, a, a very nice, very joyful day. And we got, you know, players punching each other on the on the Timberwolves. We got former Piston Mason Plumley fighting dudes on the bench. You got... It's some crazy stuff going on in the NBA on Easter Sunday, man. But I hope you guys enjoyed it all. It definitely gives you some drama as a as an NBA fan. Um, but anyways, I want to finish off the, the the podcast with: Should Dwayne Casey be getting a front office position? He is going up into the front office. That he confirmed that himself. Um, we don't know what the exact role is in the front office. We just know he is going up into the front office in some kind of role. Um, should he be getting a front office role? I've went back and forth on this. The, the The pro argument for it is Dwayne Casey is a great man, a great human being, and someone you want around the organization because of he's just a great person. Because he, he he was a part of a lot of these players. If these players come back, he was a part of a lot of these players' first three, four, two years in the NBA. He helped them grow. So they're going to have some kind of relationship with him, and he should serve as a good role model for these players, you want to have a good play, a, a good person in the organization around the organization. It never hurts to have a good man around the organization. That's the pro argument. The part that I've been I, I've been tossing back and forth here is nothing. Not taking any of those things away from Dwayne Casey that he's a great man, all that stuff. I, we've just talked about it, but he wasn't successful as the Pistons head coach. Like it, we just gotta be honest about it. Like just just this is a business. This is a business. This is nothing personal. This is just straight up business. And my job is to, is to talk about the facts on the court, the facts of what happened. And he was not successful as the Pistons head coach. Corey Woods brought it up on the podcast um, last episode. The last three seasons, he hasn't amounted to 82 wins. A full calendar season of an NBA, he hasn't even had that many wins over the last three years. Now, you can say they were rebuilding. That's true. You can say that they weren't trying to win. That's true. But nonetheless... It's not like, for example, if this was Larry Brown that we're giving a celebratory front office position to, I, don't, I wouldn't have any issue with it. I don't think anyone would have an issue with it. He's earned it. He did great things for the organization. He's earned it. Like, heck, even even Joe D, even Joe D, even after what he did at the end of his time, that man brought was a part of each championship in Pistons history. If they wanted to go out there and say, Joe D, come back to the, to the organization and serve us in some role, be a part of this, Absolutely, he deserves it. He, he he brought great things to the organization. He contributed to making this organization one of the best franchises in NBA history. He contributed to that. And again, it's nothing personal to Dwayne Casey, but he didn't do that. 
He was brought to this team to get them to the playoffs. They made the playoffs as an eighth seed. There were some questionable things that happened there with Blake Griffin that I have, I, I've brought up before. But they made it as the eighth seed, and they got swept. Didn't get a playoff win while he was here. And the team has just, they just got done coaching the worst, the second worst season in the Pistons history. So that's not the take. That's not saying that Dwayne Casey doesn't know basketball. It doesn't mean Dwayne Casey is not a great human being. It doesn't mean Dwayne Casey isn't a great role model. And at the end of the day, do I have a big problem with it? No, I don't have a big problem with it. I just sit, I just sit back and find myself questioning. Should we really be just handing out front office roles to people for just being good people? At the end of the day, it's a business, and I, for me. For me, again, I, I want to make this very clear. I don't have an issue with it. Like, it's not a big problem. I just, I'm just, i just, I'm just throwing it out there. I, this is something I've thought about. I'd rather like be handing those those kind of positions be celebrated and handed to guys who contributed to the a lot a lot of the successes of the Detroit Pistons franchise. Like I mentioned, if they wanted to give like Rip, Chauncey, Tayshon, Sheed, Ben, like any anybody who contributed in any positive way. Any positive way to the Pistons to the Pistons history, then I could be like, okay, you want you want to reward them for something they actually contributed to this team, to this franchise. And at the end of the day, not taking anything away from Dwayne Casey, the man, the human, the great person he is, and the role model that he is, not taking any of that away, I don't think he did enough for the franchise. From just a if you just being a, just looking at how it is without removing all emotion from it. I do not think that Dwayne Casey did enough for the franchise for this to be a celebrated like, oh, thank God Dwayne Casey's in the front office or he really deserves it. I'm cool with him having it. It's not a big issue. It's, I, real quickly, as long as he's not like making front office decisions. Like if he's having major input, input on like moves being made and he's like, then I call into question some things. But if he's just being like an advisory role and developmental coach or something or like, I don't know, a life coach or something. Okay. Or a life person in the in the front office. I don't know. I don't know what his role is. As long as it's not t- nothing too big, making big decisions, I don't have a problem with it. I just thought it was something that should be tossed out there. Should we just be giving these... Sorry about that. My computer crashed in the middle of that sentence. But basically what I'm saying is should we just be giving out front office positions to people we don't know really contributed to a big part of the organization. But at the end of the day, it's not too big of a deal to me. I don't really care. It's just a thought process that went through my head. I'd like to hear how you guys feel about it. But... That's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you guys for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We're free and available on all your podcast platforms. Hit that subscribe button at the YouTube channel. Leave us a five-star review whenever podcast platform you're listening to this on. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Stay safe and peace out.